Section 16 of Magna Carta Commemoration Essays. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marianne. Financial Records of the Reign of King John by Henry Jenkinson. Part 2. Pipe Rolls. These exist for every year except the 15th and 18th and fragments of the latter are made up in the roll of the seventeenth year. Chancellor's rolls exist for the third, fourth, seventh, tenth, thirteenth, and seventeenth year. That for the third year was printed by the Record Commission. There is also a fragment in the Exchequer K.R. Miscellanea 1-6. Memoranda. Two rolls are definitely so called, though they are not now numbered with the classes of that name, they are Exchequer LTR, Miscellaneous Rolls, 1-3 and 1-4. Vouchers and Miscellanea. Classed as such, though we may have to bestow some of them elsewhere, are at present one document in Exchequer KR, Miscellanea, and eleven among the Exchequer Accounts. Of the latter, six are MIES and Impressed Rolls, partly known by the Record Commission publication, Exchequer Accounts, 349, Numbers 1b, 2 and 3, and 325, Numbers 1, 21 and 2, and referred to under Household below. Of the remaining five, two, Exchequer Accounts, 505, Numbers 2 and 3, have to be eliminated at once, as they belong really to the following reign. On the other hand, one, Exchequer Accounts, 349, Numbers 1a, at present classed as belonging to the previous reign must be assigned to our period. We have therefore to consider under this heading five documents, of which one, Exchequer Account 152, Number 1, has been printed by a foreign student. Tallies. One possibility of this reign has survived. Receipt Rolls. We have one doubtful fragment, Receipt Roll 2, and one Jewish Roll, Receipt Roll 1564. For purposes of illustration, we may note four earlier fragments, two of Henry II, one of Richard I, and one, a Jewish roll, of the same reign. Issue rolls. None survive. Original writs of Liberate. One such has been found in Ancient Correspondence, Volume 47, Number 2. Household or Camera. Here are to be classed the three Mise rolls and possibly the three Prestita already mentioned. Two of them were formerly included among the Chancellery Rolls and were printed by Hardy. They came from the Tower, which was a repository both of Chancery and Exchequer records. The remaining four probably came from the Record Office, all from the Carlton Ride repository of the ancient miscellanea of the Exchequer K.R. Of these four, the two Mys are duplicates, the best of which Cole has printed. Cole has also printed one of the Prestita, but the other has not yet been published. The Mys are of the 12th and 14th years of John, the Prestita of the 7th, 12th, and 14th to 17th years, the last, 14th to 17th, being unprinted and consisting really of separate rolls for several years. It will be noticed that we have made so far no reference to Originalia or to Norman records. Both require some reference to the Chancery as well as the Exchequer and may therefore conveniently be treated together here. Originalia Actually, at the Exchequer, there is no trace of these. The classes of chancery records from which the originalia, when they came into existence, were drawn give us in the time of John a varying amount of Exchequer information, and to these we must go direct. We may note them in the chancery. The Barate Rolls There are three of these belonging to the second, third, and fourth years of John. All were printed by the Record Commission, with an introduction by Sir Thomas Hardy, but we shall have a small addition to make to them later. Close Rolls These again were all printed by the Commission with an elaborate introduction, also by Hardy. Including three duplicates, they number fifteen rolls covering the sixth to the ninth and the fourteenth to the eighteenth years of the reign. We may add that two fragmentary membranes have been recently discovered and added to the rolls of the sixteenth and seventeenth years. These fragments fill a number of gaps in the printed version. Fine or oblata rolls. Including three duplicates, there are eleven of these covering the first, second, third, sixth, seventh, ninth, 
fifteenth seventeenth and eighteenth years of john's reign these once more were all printed by the commission under hardy's editorship we shall have later to say a few words with regard to the nature of these chancery rolls for the moment we may leave them adding in passing a mention only of the patent and charter rolls less directly connected with exchequer procedure together with a note that we shall have ourselves a small fragment to add to the fine roll class turning now to the norman records we have to examine two divisions exchequer and chancery the first of these that of the norman pipe rolls includes duplicates presumably chancellor's rolls though they were not known under that name it consists now of a collection formed in eighteen sixty two of eighteen rolls fourteen being of the reign of john and four of an earlier date these rolls were edited in eighteen forty and eighteen forty four for the society of antiquaries by stapleton unfortunately the later arrangement does not correspond with that of stapleton and it is a little difficult to decide which rolls he used it is clear that he collated the duplicates to some extent but that he had not access to all of them is plain from the fact that he printed the very fragmentary roll number twenty two membrane sixteen of which number six is a practically uninjured duplicate it may be convenient to add here as a footnote a key to the rolls used by stapleton we have to add the fragment discovered and printed by delisle though this does not belong to our period we shall have later to make a small addition ourselves we come finally to the norman rolls of the english chancery these form part of a single series applying in turn to the reigns of john and henry v hardy printed six rolls for the first of these reigns three of the second year and one each of the third fourth and fifth and one for the second with an introduction which is for once definitely inadequate he does not consider the question whether a single title is really applicable to the rolls of the two reigns nor though he gives some faint indication of it the fact that the rolls of our period are themselves by no means a homogeneous series his work was continued for the reign of henry v in a calendar in the appendix to the deputy keeper's forty-second report without any recognition of the fact that in the meantime an entirely new norman roll of john had been added to the series number one the rolls are now numbered in an order different from that in which hardy printed them and that a new membrane had been added to one of the rolls number six already published the extra roll need not in point of fact trouble us here as it has in reality nothing to do with normandy being a portion of an english liberate roll in concluding our summary we must add for completeness a reference to the plea rolls of this reign there are fifty-five plea rolls of the king's court and twelve belonging to the class of visitational jurisdictions also to the early files of feet of fines containing fines of our period some of which have not been printed we have thus unpublished and unconsidered besides the pipe rolls and all save one of the chancellor's rolls two memoranda rolls five documents in the class of exchequer accounts two in that of receipt rolls one and a fragment in that of the norman rolls one at least in that of the norman pipe rolls and two fragments in that of close rolls together with a tally and an original writ of liberate the three last named need not detain us we have in addition a body of unpublished plea rolls and feet of fines the indirect evidence from which might be considerable but this again is beyond our scope and we have suggested that the significance of the chancery rolls published by the record commission has by no means been exhausted as yet in opening some investigation of these possible sources of information we may conveniently recapitulate one or two points with regard to exchequer procedure which it is very desirable to remember a touching the relation of the upper and lower exchequer one receipts of the king's revenue do not necessarily all appear on the pipe roll i have noticed elsewhere the case of jewish receipts and the collection of william cade's debts moreover the whole of the revenue of the crown does not necessarily go through the lower exchequer we have already mentioned the possibilities of the camera two in the case of issues the pipe roll is even more incomplete essentially it covers only the cases where an official has money paid him for which he is held to account these being generally cases in which the money is not paid out of the treasury at all but subtracted in advance by the accountant to meet current expenses from that which he will be expected to pay in it is thus seen that the pipe roll is not a guide to receipts and expenditure and that the only relation between the upper and lower exchequers 
is that the latter is required to give evidence not of all of its receipts but of such only as establish or disprove the statements made by an accountant at his audit b as to norman and english administration historians have been agreed up to the present that the norman sacarium is merely a reproduction in normandy of the english one mutatus mutandus made for convenience similarly a norman thesaurus reproduces the english thesaurus since there is no audit of the king's receipts and issues as a whole an exchequer procedure acts only as a check upon the local accountant there is no inconvenience in this previous writers however have taken the existence of a similarity in points of surface procedure between the two rather for granted in spite of the warning of the dialogues de lisle for instance in a work which still stands so far as regards its survey of the divisions and resources of normandy as a revenue producing country treats the actual machinery of the sicarium in somewhat cursory style boldly applying the dialogus description of the english institution to its norman parallel and even importing into the latter without evidence a system of originalia which did not adorn the english exchequer so far as we know till a later date beyond an inaccurate description of one of stapleton's rolls as a receipt roll he has not found it necessary to make any serious attempt nor have his successors m valin or professor powicki to establish the existence and scope of other records or record processes in normandy nor though it is agreed that one chief executive office one chancery controlled by both countries have they looked very far for any possible special treatment by the chancery of norman affairs we turn now to the pipe rolls of the reign of john the bulk of these as has been said is so enormous that it would be unwise even to attempt to sketch out all the problems which the student of them will be called upon to discuss when they with those of richard i are in print it must suffice to venture one or two theories as to the lines upon which growth was going on in the class during our period growth that is away from originally simple essentials into the utter confusion which undoubtedly reigned at the end of the thirteenth century and the highly complicated character which we know marked these records from the latter part of edward the second's reign onwards it would be particularly unwise since apart from the bare outlines just suggested no one has yet made such research as would enable us to get a clear and detailed idea of the state of things which was in existence in these later periods under these reservations we may venture here to put forward the fairly obvious suggestion that later developments of the originally simple pipe roll hinge entirely on the attempt to apply this essentially simple machinery either to business for which it was not designed or to business of a bulk so vastly increased that it broke down under the sheer weight i have suggested that as early as henry the second the machinery used for getting in or for assuring what was then the greater part of the king's income was proving quite inadequate to provide him with cash that so early as eleven sixty six the king was habitually anticipating many and large sums by means of assignments this alone introduced cross-references into the accounting to an extent almost unbearable and it is to be remembered that the use of these convenient assignments was continually growing again the sources of income which figure in our original picture of the sicarium all increased in bulk the cases for instance which came into the king's court and consequently the fines and immersements alone sufficed by their enlargement to upset machinery based on an idea that all the accounts could be assembled at the annual exchequer in a limited period their accounts audited and the roll describing the process written up while that process was going on besides the actual numbers of sources of income increased and though as in the case of the jewish talliages many of them do not come under the pipe roll audit yet we may argue i think that exchequer opinion would be always working up towards a state of affairs when these new sources should be under the same restrictions as the old throughout its long history the exchequer was always trying to subordinate the new whether in material or forms to the old not only this but it would be we know it was working up always towards the inclusion of the spending departments in the audit that is to the state we find when foreign rolls and the like modifications appear finally in considering the developments we may expect to find at the exchequer or indeed in any administrative department we have always to reckon with the fact that john's reign followed that of richard a period which introduced new elements of confusion while it is scarcely likely to have found time for much rearrangement or reform 
The early pipe rolls, at least, of John's reign contain references to numerous arrears of the time of his brother. An entertaining instance may be found in the cases of certain people who still owed substantial fines for siding with Count John. Taking all these considerations into account, we may confidently anticipate that the reign of John will find the exchequer system as it was badly hit at certain definite points. There is a difficulty of getting business through in anything like a reasonable time, a tendency of the audit to spread over a longer and longer period. Convention makes its proceedings begin at Michaelmas, but from Michaelmas they extend for an ever-lengthening time. The resulting confusion, since the sheriff of one county accounts in October, while he of another is perhaps not dealt with till March, between the accounts of a given year and those of the preceding and succeeding ones is potentially very great. There is confusion also between different kinds of exchequer records at any given date. For example, the Yorkshire receipts of March of a given year might belong to the Yorkshire audit of the previous or following year. A pipe roll which shall be written up at the actual time of audit becomes, in fact, an impossibility. Further, there is a legacy of arrears, and these we may say are increasing. Finally, there is a confusion between transactions which go on the pipe roll and those which do not, a confusion that is between treasury or recepta, matters on the one hand and camera matters on the other, which may be productive of extreme inconvenience in public administration. From these facts again we may deduce the probability of an attempt to solve exchequer problems on certain definite lines. First, we may expect to find preliminary and supplementary processes of all kinds going on at the upper exchequer before and after audit, all the year round in fact. Secondly, we may deduce a pipe roll made up beforehand and consequently having to be either corrected at audit time or else left blank or incorrect in parts and again we may expect the beginning possibility of some organized forms of new account, some attempt, it is the obvious remedy for congestion at the final audit, at a preliminary compotus in several chosen cases, and certainly of the habitual accumulation of a great many vouchers and memoranda. This last, in particular, the extension of the habit of keeping memoranda, is a fairly certain deduction. The mere lapse of time which may occur between the preliminary interview of the exchequer officials with an accountant and his final examination, the mere amount of confusion that may be caused in his accounts by the fact that he has paid in money in two or three different ways and places, these and other considerations, such as we have adumbrated above, must, if anything at all is to be accomplished at the exchequer, connote some attempt at organized memoranda of extra audit transactions. It is to this class of records, therefore, that we must turn for indications of the new developments in audit procedure which were produced by the time and circumstances of the reign of John. Before we do this, however, we may perhaps glance at the Norman exchequer. We know that the two exchequers are at least closely connected, and we know that Richard of Ilchester was transferred to the Norman exchequer in 1176, presumably in order to effect changes of some kind, whether these were in the direction of differentiation from or approximation to the English model. In the first place, are these Norman pipe rolls so close to the English ones in some surface matters as is assumed by most people, and to some extent by Stapleton? The eighteen rolls fall into two groups. The smaller of these consist only of three rolls. One of these occupies two pages in Stapleton and is fragmentary. We may say at once that most of the missing part is to be found in the unprinted exchequer account already referred to, which has hitherto been described as a mise roll and ascribed to the reign of Richard I. The two fragments form together an almost complete account of the receipts and expenditure of Warin de Capon, Seneschal of Normandy, in 1200-1. The other two rolls are duplicates, and are similar accounts of of Robert de Vertelli Pont then bailiff of the Rumois in 1203. The larger of the two groups is that of the Norman pipe rolls proper, but they differ from the English ones in several important respects. All are of much the same breadth, 11 inches, but this is not the same as that of their English contemporaries, which are about 15 inches. In length again they vary between 3 and 8 feet, the largest rolls consisting of a number of membranes sewn head to tail, the English rolls practically never exceeded two. Another point of difference is found in the way in which they are written. Some are indexed at the tail of the membrane, as all the English ones are, and they have place headings, and, 
after the form, subject headings which correspond mutatis mutandis with those of the English ones. But they impress one rather as having a common tradition with their English contemporaries than as being written by scribes trained in the same school. It is possible that this surface impression is incorrect, but in any case it is not improbable that a paleographical examination of the two sets of rolls might establish points of importance with regard to the relations of their producers. But there is one more noticeable difference to be mentioned. We have already alluded to the inclusion in the pipe roll of accounts other than those of the normal accounting officials as being one of the obvious results which must spring from the widening of the sources of revenue and as one of the great changes crystallized in the 14th century, of which earlier traces might be found. The distinction of such from the ordinary accounts which appear on the pipe roll are, first, the fact that they may be rendered by all kinds of officials, secondly, the fact that they are more marked by division into receipt and expenditure, each of these being usually given a summa totalis, and finally, the fact that the receipts may represent sums not collected from the king's subjects to be paid into the exchequer and only expended upon the king's special order, but sums received from the exchequer expressly for the purpose of definite expenditure. Now the germ of such accounts is to be found in certain early pipe rolls and in certain exceptional cases. Thus the warden of a mint must necessarily, from the nature of his business, account in some such way as that just described. Besides this, cases will be found such as that of the Sheriff of Kent, who was charged with military building on a large scale at Dover in 32 Henry the Second. In that case the sheriff renders account, among other matters, de recepta sua de thesoro. The Norman pipe rolls seem undoubtedly to carry this principle further, and it is possible that we see here Richard of Ilchester adopting at the Norman exchequer reforms which his English experience had shown him to be necessary, but which, for various reasons, were delayed in England till a later date. This may lead us to a discussion of the small second group of three Norman pipe rolls, these rolls are narrow, eight or nine inches, and short. They use the phrases of the pipe roll, reddit copuntum, est quietus, and so forth, but they are also distinguished by new ones, and they are distinguished particularly by a division into two main parts, receipts and expenses, with a final balance. Not to linger over the description, they are strikingly similar to the later compotus of the English exchequer, the preliminary accounts compiled from vouchers in the King's Remembrancers Department, which we noticed above, or to the final copy of these enrolled among the foreign accounts, and they show us first the Seneschal, and then Robert de Vitiri Pont, expending money received for the purpose from the Exchequer, even from the English Thesaurus. We have, in fact, at the Norman Exchequer an anticipation of two most important points in later English Exchequer processes, the auditing of foreign accounts, including a considerable quantity of accounts of expenditure, and the auditing of them apart from the ordinary pipe roll process and on a different kind of roll. This is to say that we have found, if our suggestion is correct, an anticipation of the later attempt to meet difficulties of time and place caused by increase in the number and size of accounts by means of a separate audit. Let us turn now to consider the other expedients which, as we have suggested, must have grown into greatly increased use to meet the same difficulties the memoranda which, in an embryo form, we saw existing in the time of the Dialogus. End of section 16